Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Hancock Park Referral Network. It is Tuesday, May 18th. And uh, please, welcome to the group. Please turn on your video, list your name and category in your Zoom ID. Make sure to post any contact information or chat information. And the meeting begins now. It'll end before 8.30. Remember the meeting is being recorded. All right. Sounds like we have uh, some background noise there. Jimmy, can you move to the uh, next slide, please? All right, let's get a quick intro guest introduction of, um, let's see, I guess, Doug, you're still a guest. Let's have an introduction. Name, company, category. Doug Weinstein, Diamond Bakery on Fairfax and uh, Baked Goods. Okay, beautiful. Thank you. Next slide, Jimmy. All right, Liberty Worth, you're up. Morning. The TIP is a professional organization of men and women dedicated to the highest standards of competence and service. Our purpose is the exchange of business tips. Members will at all times maintain the highest professional integrity. Each business category is represented by one member only and conflicts of interest are disallowed. Beautiful. Thank you very much. And next slide. Great. Uh, Jimmy, how about you read it with your happy voice? Or any voice. That was my quiet voice. <laughs> a, qual a qualified business tip is a company or person who is interested in a specific service or product and is expecting a call from an HPRN member. Woo! All right, beautiful. Thank you. Next, we have our today, we have our speaker, Diamond Doug, the baker. And after that, in the last week, we have had. Uh, our board members have been uh, forced uh, to uh, watch a board webinar for two and a half hours this week. So I want you all to give big props to Jim Bloomfield, Antonio Goodwin, uh, Jimmy Green, Eric Flexner. Who else? Who am I missing? Who else was on the board meeting? Oh, John Chadbourne. Thank you guys for your, that was not easy or fun, but we're going to have a little, and now you guys can give us a few sentences on, on what you learned, kind of give us the benefit of your uh, education there. And then after that, we're going to go over a few rules and then we're going to end the meeting. Okay. So let's start with our showboat today, who is driving. Doug, please be careful. Um, Diamond, Doug, the baker. Are you with That's us? Time for, yeah, yeah, I'm with you. Hold on. Let me, um, I'm just, I just pulled over. So let me uh, get back over here and then I'll share my screen. And then I will um, web URL. Okay. Um, so Diamond Bakery LA was started by two couples that met in Auschwitz in 1945, which is wow. during the Holocaust. Can you guys see my screen? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, it's a, and so they met, they met in Auschwitz, right? Horrible, gates of hell, um, were repatriated, you know, moved to the uh, United States, ended up in Los Angeles and started, uh, purchased Diamond Bakery. It was named after an old lady named Diamond who was a little crazy and had a, a, uh, a mixed reputation in town. They bought it and it has been in constant operation uh, ever since. It has been family owned um, and until December of 2019 when the son of one of the families decided he had enough houses, sports cars and money, he was just gonna let it go. And the employees who had been there on average 25 years uh, asked if they could continue running it. And so with their love of the origin of, of the parents of this gentleman and the history that they were taught and the fact that they saw the 
the numbers tattooed on their arms and they would tell the stories of the horrors. They wanted to maintain the legacy and the tradition and, and keep the business going. And uh, unfortunately in, um, in March, the pandemic hit hard. Um, in April, they had to shut down for the entire month. In May, they opened back up and they have diligently worked their butts off to keep it going out of respect for the, the founders. Um, and that's when uh, my business partner and I went to LA for a pilgrimage to Cantor's and to Diamond to pick up some stuff and bring it back to Santa Barbara. And we found out that they were struggling and we, we uh, entered into the conversation about uh, taking over. Um, and here we go, June 1, we're gonna be taking control this is a picture of the famous rye bread. They're, they're famous for their um, corn rye, which was sold in Trader Joe's for 30 years until mid-2019 when they had to come up with a, a batch tracing program, which they never did. Um, so traders were back in, in communication with them. Um, so if you know anybody at Trader Joe's, um, have any contacts there, please um, reach out to me and do an introduction. Uh, I also need to update this website because it's horrible, which we are doing. Um, hey, Doug. Yeah. Uh, the, I know somebody who imports stuff from Denmark and then sells it to Trader Joe's. Uh, is, that a, a, is that somebody? Uh, yeah, we can, we can talk to them um, for, for sure. Like, do you need uh, here to talk we go. To another importer? Yeah. Um, you know, somebody at Trader Joe's, a buyer. I mean, I've got friends that know the buyers there. I used to uh, be a guest at the main bakery buyer's house at the Long Beach Grand Prix uh, for many years, way back in the uh, 90s. I don't know if she's still there, but I'm going to start reaching out. But I have already submitted uh, the paperwork, and, and I should be hearing back from them soon. But here's a picture of some of the products. Um, the There's the corn rye. Now, disregard the prices because they're all going up 20% because they haven't changed them since 1992. Um, we also have bagels. If anybody knows a really good bagel baker, like someone who wants to take over the bagel market, a guy that says he knows how to make the best bagels and he's just looking for a place to do it, have him call me. Um, the rugelach is by far the best little cookie you'll ever pop in your mouth. Uh, the onion rye, we sell it to um, Nate and Al's, uh, and every other deli in town uses the diamond rye bread. Um, how much time do I get for the showboating thing? <clears throat> Sounds like you want to finish. Well, no, I'm just wondering. I could go on forever. I'm, I'm, I'm good to go. Um, no, yeah, you've got I'm, time. It's only 726, baby. Okay, so I'm going to stop the share screen and I'll put on my camera. So a little bit of my background. Um, I, was, uh, um, I, be, I was inspired to become a, a chef when I was 13. Uh, my dad sat me down and said, you know, son, it's time for you to start thinking about the direction you want to go in life. Because um, where he comes from in Argentina, junior high school or middle school is when they start on their track. So they're either doctors, engineers, teachers, you know, whatever they're going to be, that's, that's the school that they go to. So I started thinking about it and, and he was at that time had just been displaced by computers, CAD CAM. He was a design engineer, mechanical design engineer. And, and I was a fat little kid, loved to eat. And I thought, you know, there's two things that are always going to be around computers and food. And so I chose to go into food. And uh, became, uh, you know, uh, started cooking uh, for money at 13 uh, for summer jobs. And uh, at 18, out of high school, I started a pastry apprenticeship at the Century Plaza Hotel. Um, I, I won some awards as an apprentice and some food shows. Um, worked with the youngest master chef uh, in the U.S., Raymond Hoffmeister, went on to work. Uh, at a bunch of hotels in town, Checkers Hotel, Regent Beverly Wilshire, um, and in 1989 when Pretty Woman was filmed, and we were rated the number two hotel in the world. So I've got bakery in my blood. 
I've owned Nice Buns Bakery in Long Beach. Um, I had the cafe at the Jewish Community Center. And so, you know, I'm involved in the community. Part of, you know, the, being Jewish is being involved, being in the community, doing, you know, doing mitzvah, doing good deeds. And so what I, I've always done is cook. And I've cooked as a volunteer and I've cooked to feed people because feeding people is a, is a mitzvah. And so Diamond Bakery is the culmination of, of my passions, right? Is, is being involved in doing good in the community uh, through food. And so we're really excited to start our not pro nonprofit, which is going to work closely with the Hirsch Family Kitchen across the street and Jewish Family Services to do job training, to provide food, you know, uh, for the needy. Um, and we're also going to start the Jewish Baking Institute so that we can continue uh, the traditions of Jewish baking and all those foods that came from the East, you know, from from Eastern Europe. And, and we're going to expand that to Jewish baked traditions from all over the world. And we're going to call that organization Lador Vado, which is a play on words. Lador Vador means from generation to generation. And that's how that's how, you know, most faiths continue is that generations teach it and pass it along to generations. We're going to do that through bread and through baking. So Lador Vado is what we're calling that. Um, and so we're excited. Uh, uh, you know, uh, it's, you know, it's a passion play for me. I'm, I, I just gave notice at my full-time, you know, lucrative uh, job and uh, I feel free. So I'm excited. I'm meeting T. I'm on my way down to meet T over at the bakery uh, to talk about doing some upgrades. Um, would love to, uh, to you know, um, meet up with any of you if you're going to be around and available since I'll be in L.A. And uh, if you want to come by and, and get yourself a chocolate chip uh, Danish, which which are amazing, or, you know, a cheese pocket or maybe a rye bread, then, uh, you know, I'll be there for a few hours. What, what time are you going to be there? Uh, from what time to what time? I'm, uh, I'm as well, as soon as I'm done talking, I'm going to hit the road again. I should be there by nine. I'm meeting T there at nine. Okay. And we're going to look at, you know, uh, upgrading lights and painting and, and some things. And so I'll be there for a little bit. Okay. I'll try to swing by. Although if you guys are going to be doing a walkthrough, uh, or, you know, I'll give you a call when I'm done. Maybe I can yeah. drive by wherever you are. Cool. Cool. Thank you. Uh, All right. Any questions for Diamond Doug? I thought you were going to show us how to get baked. Well, uh, you question put question your two you. fingers together. You put it up to your mouth. And, uh, well, you know, the great thing, I have a new phrase. Right? Two doors down is a, is a cannabis store. So I think our new slogan is going to be, uh, Diamond Bakery, get baked twice on one block. <laughs> I mean, get, to, get baked twice on one block. Anyway, never, then we're not going to do that. <laughs> we're not that <laughs> yeah. Uh, I actually, I'm sorry, guys, if you can hear me. Um, I, t I, I went to Doug's place last week and got some, um, some pastries for my my guys and I got the I think it was the walnut roll Doug yeah and uh the guys just loved it so that's me just adding a little bit to my whole crew loved it so just awesome F good to hear and you know what I love I love that every time we have a meeting T is out running around for us <laughs> like she's out on the road we're running her around why don't we run her around at like Three o'clock in the afternoon. Do we oh, have no. running her around at seven a.m.? <laughs> <laughs> you you know, this is how committed I am to you guys. <laughs> her industry is on their way for their first beer at the end of the day at three o'clock, right? Yeah, they started. Well, three o'clock is over. So. <laughs> I, I have been I have been up since probably four thirty this morning. <laughs> yeah. So, All right. I, uh, I just have to say, Doug, I, I still have that contact of the, the one of the best muralists in L.A. who would love to talk with you. Oh, great. Well, have them call me. Okay. Um, I would love to have them call me because that is going to be 
one of the first things that I want to do is I, I want to get that wall. I mean, it's 30 feet high and 90 feet long and it's ugly brick. And it's like the most, it's the, it, it's, it's a free mark. It's a free billboard. Yeah. And yeah. to not do something. And so the idea on the first panel is to paint it, to look like you're looking inside the bakery. So to have like bread painted on a rack and people standing inside. So when you drive by, it looks like a full bakery, you know? Yeah, this, anyway, this oh, artist please. is really good. He did the um, the mural on the side of pans, you know, on La Tijera. And, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, so he's got a ton of experience. He just did a huge one, like the entire side of a firehouse and lots of, that's a Kobe mural. So he's he's got a ton of experience. He's excellent. Awesome, yeah, have, please have him call me. Okay. That'd be awesome. Maybe post your phone number in the thing. I don't think I have it. Okay. Thanks. And well, Liberty has to do well too. More questions for Diamond Doug. Hey Doug, my earpiece fell out when you were telling us when you're going to be there today. What were the times? I'm going to get there. I'm meeting T at nine. I'll be hanging out for a couple hours. I'll be hanging out. I don't have anywhere to be. So. And do they have any? Do 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 we get any baked goods for free? <laughs> yes. Because we can't spend four dollars and fifty cents ourselves. You you can. That would be the <laughs> the dignified thing to do. But if you want something for free, I'll give it to you. How's that? <laughs> it's just how we're built, you know. Oh man, I paid for mine. If you say free, we it's like. <laughs> That's right. That's part of the myth. Like, you know, the good deed of, of doing something, you know, is, is, is doing well. I don't get the money yet. After June 1st, I can start giving stuff away. Don't you love how, like, uh, you join a networking group to do business, and then we want, we just start wanting free stuff. Well, you know, well, I there, wonder... there is a time and place for it, right? There is a time and place. It, it's kind of like the dealer on the corner. You give out a couple, you get them hooked. And then they come back. We're going to walk up the street when all those people are in line and we're going to give them little bites of brownies and cookies. And <laughs> we're hey, gonna it works for Costco. Yeah, it does. Oh, right. let, can, can I just say those were some of the best dates ever at Costco. So if, you, if you're following behind Costco, I mean, me and my fiance, we would go to Costco on a Sunday just for the <laughs> for Sunday That's brunch like, tea. <laughs> <laughs> So if you're gonna follow that, that's excellent. I'll be there every Sunday. <laughs> you got it. Doug, speaking right. about free, I, I have to I have to put a put in a plug for the group here. When are you joining? Uh I'm gonna join uh in June. I'm gonna join, actually. Okay. Yeah, Eric said I could come for a few weeks until June, but I'd have to fork out the cash in June. So um See, he's kind of doing the same dealer thing. He's just, you know, That's right. getting me hooked, you know. And, and anyway, so I'm hooked. So I'll, I'll be joining in June. Beautiful. Excited about that. Um, anybody else have any questions or anything for Diamond Doug the Baker? I'm going off camera right now, so I can drive. No, I think that was good. You have black and white cookies. Of course. All right. And and we're gonna do a black and white and brown cookie too, because we want everybody to feel included. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anything else? Any other questions? Uh, All right. Beautiful. Thank you very much, Diamond Doug. We cannot wait. I'll try to be there after nine. I have to take Luke somewhere to Palos Verdes, but if I can make it, I will. Hopefully I'll see Laisha there. Um, Palos Verdes. Yeah, Palos yeah, Verdes. Tennis, tennis club? Oh, he's in the World Robot Championships. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. All right, well, just stay in touch. Well, if you don't meet say, there, we'll meet somewhere. I don't think you're going to meet that. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I didn't hear you, T. I said, I don't think you're going to make it back in time <laughs> from I Palos Verdes. <laughs> Well, it, it's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's after. It's after. All right. Next, let's move to the next uh, uh, order of business. This last week, five of our lovely members 
were summarily forced to <laughs> go and watch two and a half hour webinar on how to be a good board member of our group. And so I'm gonna ask each one of our, our uh, hostages to tell us a little bit about what they learned. One of the things about going through those webinars is to then turn around and help our, the group itself understand by sort of just describing what you saw. Um, doesn't have to be a long, could be one sentence, it can be 10, whatever, just uh, why don't you guys give me an idea of what you learned. Uh, starting with John Chadbourne, who is our secretary. Hold Yay. on, before John goes, <laughs> if I could add a little commentary. Um, the reason Eric's saying this, because we all did the training last year. We're in the same position as we were last year. So Eric's like, why are we doing this again? So, you know, that, but there was some good stuff, but I'm with Eric. Yeah, like, and why and, do we and I'm do just joking because the fact is we're in LATIP. We're, in, we're a chapter of LATIP because they do the training so that we can continue to keep things going in a <clears throat> successful and upward direction. So um, I'm just kidding. I mean, I'm a big proponent of training, but, um, but of course <clears throat> I told everybody about the training the night before and they were gonna have to go two and a half hours the next day. <laughs> so I'm just joking, it was, it was really my fault. All right, <clears throat> so John Chadbourne, let's have a little synopsis of anything you might've learned. So, uh, well, I wasn't on the, uh, the, the, the training that Eric, uh, the night before call, I did it a few days earlier because I got this email that said, you know, we're going to fine you $300 if you don't do it. And I thought, okay, that's bad. <laughs> I don't want to get fined. <laughs> so I did the training, you know, I should have picked a better time. So it was a little bit tough. It was at seven in the morning and, you know, the days, you know, I'm already starting to get emails by seven thirty, eight o'clock. So, um, but what I got out of it is, you know, as secretary, um, I am supposed to look at the newsletter or website um, and do a two minute talk during the meetings, which I haven't done. I didn't look at the, the website this last week, um, but I need to do a two minute talk about what, what is going on with LATIP. And that's what I learned. Um, I also saw, you know, a lot of it, it was, it was interesting because it wasn't quite what I expected for training because a lot of it was just reinforcing the, uh, you know, the, how LATIP works. I mean, it was a lot of that, a lot of speakers just reinforcing how the tip works and, um, and the benefit that you get out of it. So it was, a, you know, it was kind of, it was good to hear. It was good to hear. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. And what was the, uh, the two minute thing? What was that? Is that? I have to like look at the Latip website or Latip news. Um, you know, this is, it was like a little blurb that I caught. Um, you know, the training wasn't, I didn't see the training, Eric, as geared to like, the board members. I thought I saw it as is a very you know kind of broad, um, you know about kind of you know the, like I said the benefits of Latip seemed like what the, the majority of it was, but it came like this little blurb and they said for me to look at like the newsletter, the website, and kind of a almost like a current event is kind of what I got out of it that I need to talk to you guys every week about. Oh, so you're you're they're telling you to watch the two minute blurb and then and then give it to us when in the meeting no for me to like read the website or read the news and talk to you guys for two minutes i guess i should have said and talk to you guys for 20 minutes that yeah, would have yeah. been better you know so that's talk a dangerous to you guys. position to give you yeah so but I'll, I'll look i'll dig a little deeper into it and see if i can oh that does sound actually really good if you could do that or yeah, you know, yeah. just try I'd love to hear what they, you know, what their news, I mean, they're, they're trying to be relevant. So right. it would right. be great if you could give a weekly. Yeah, no, like I said, I'll look into it. I'll, I'll, I'll get you. up and running. All right. Remind me next week, if you could, if I don't remember. Okay. Uh, Jim Bloomfield. Okay. So I went to a different training than John. Um, it was uh, Friday morning and um, there were basically a few things that they talked about. It was a, it was actually different than the first training. I thought by a lot. Uh, it was a lot more values based uh, instead of mechanics. Uh, they talked. They they showed videos of of Latip members talking about their experiences um, and the benefits that they had achieved. And it's pretty amazing. There's like there are a couple of incredible stories. You know about um, people who during the pandemic their businesses were like 
totally kaput. And through La Tip, they were actually used these lunch, these lunch bunch meetings that they do, and these other uh, and like the brunch meetings. They're, they have these meetings that are like national meetings that you can just like go to on um, on a regular basis. They're posted on the on the website La Tip Wired wherever they are. But I mean, people use this network nationally to get referrals um, that save their businesses. Um, and there were a few really incredible stories. Um, and, um, and then there was this guy who had started a LATIP meeting, a LATIP group. He had tried in New York City as a broker. Uh, he was an investments broker. And he had to start three chapters um, over a period of years. And they just talked about, you know, his perseverance. And I think he might have gotten some award or something. But um, so there was a lot of personal and sort of principled stuff going on. But they also talked about things like there was there's bylaws changes. There was a big conversation about meetings, about virtual, virtual and hybrid meetings, which is something that we're going to have to talk about um, here as a board as well at some point. Um, and then um, they have all this new technology that, can help with, um, you know, any kind of virtual situation that we might do. And so they offered that up and said, you know, if you're going to do a virtual or a hybrid situation, you really want to kind of use this kind of technology um, that they had sort of developed. And then also they have this new thing called um, the extended network app, which is pretty interesting um, where, and it's in the, it's in the LaTip Wired um, uh, uh, website. But basically what it is, it's a way that you can take all of our group's information and with a click of a button, text it to anybody who you want to see it. And they can there respond to you over the tip and they can actually send it to their friends who then can be connected to the LaTip Wired system as a guest, not necessarily, but if they want to refer to you, LaTip Wired will actually send you the referral and you can contact that person directly. So it's like a way that you can work on outside tipping. Um, and it's something I haven't actually looked into, but I did sort of check it out briefly during the meeting. And it, it, I think it's something that we really can use effectively. So uh, that's all I have to say. Okay, awesome. Thank you, Jim. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah. Um, yes. All right, Jimmy, are any questions for Jim? No. All right. In that case, next, uh, let's talk to Jimmy Greenspan. Did Eric just fall out of his couch? What happened there? <laughs> uh, He's all right, you guys. So he fell into so the his one couch. thing I got out of you guys was mm -hmm. the Latip Wired app. I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but it's pretty cool. Um, you know, the main thing they talked about those, you know, virtual meetings and getting all that. But um, I just, while he was just talking, I just downloaded the app. Bam. And it's on the app store or wherever you guys want to go. So I'm just going to show it to you real quick because there's some cool stuff in here. So you guys can see in here, you can, your chapter, our chapter roster is on there. So you can go on here and you can send a tip up here. Boom. So it's pretty cool, pretty easy. And you can do it right on the app. All right. And then, um, you know, find a member, all that, the chapter roster. If you want to email us, contact everybody, everyone's information's in here. So the app is pretty good, you guys. I highly suggest you guys get it. And what Jim was talking about was the extended network. So you're talking to somebody and you wanna refer the, our group to them, you hit the extended network, which is right there. We can go over this in more detail. And then you click new up here. And all you do is put the person's name and their phone number in there. And then what it does, and I'll just, I did it to myself right here. I'll show you what you do. They get a tip. I mean, they get a text with a link, bam. And they've got all of our information in there. So you can send someone our entire roster for, you know, and then, hey, I want to contact uh, Russell. Boom, contact me. And then I click the contact me button. Boom, and I can reach out to, to Russell directly. And, and from what I understand is I think the tip will go back to us because we gave them the list. I think that's how it works. So I, I'll have to double check on that. But that's just a neat way to see when you're talking to somebody. I've got a whole group of people. I got an insurance person. I got a financial planner. You know, I'm going to send you this link to this group I work with. Um, so you can talk to them. So I, that was the main thing I got out of it. I thought it was really beneficial. Jimmy, um, can you ahead. just can you from the talk? Can you just go through that one more time about how you could uh, recommend a group to other people? 
What do you do? So, all right. So you go into at the bottom, at the very bottom left hand, there's a picture of a globe. Can you guys see that? Yeah. And it says extended network. And you click that. <clears throat> now, in the upper right hand corner, it says new. And I'll, I'll go over this again, you guys. Invite new. And then you put that person's name and contact information in there. Cool. Uh, just a phone number, name and phone number. And then it'll send them a link, which they will get. And you can practice, you can send it to yourself. And that's the text I got with the link to our roster. So it's wow. pretty cool. So you can, right on the spot, you can just send someone. And you can right select away. any of those people. You could select to send everyone on the roster or let's say you just want to send them a few people. You can do that. And also- I, I don't cool know, I haven't it, tried that. I, no, I just it's, downloaded it's, it. That's true, you can. Yeah. Um, and, then, you can. And, then, and then also um, you can, but the cool thing about it is, you know, like if you're not getting, if you're not able to tip that much, this is just a really, it's like a golden way to just get your four tips. I, I think like I'm going to start using it because, you know, I, like in, in my day-to-day -day interactions with people, I may not necessarily be able to uh, see enough people or talk to enough people to actually get our group enough business. And so this is just a way to reach out to other people in your network. And they don't necessarily even have to be people locally. They can be any, anybody anywhere. And it's so easy to do. And it, what it does is it's going to connect our group. All of our networks then are kind of going to be sort of connected together through us, which is the whole idea of networking. Okay. So anyway, I just sent it to you guys. It's called Late Tip Wired App. So you can get it on. I just, I just got it off the Apple oh. app store. So, and I'm sure Google's got the same thing. Cool. All right. Thank you board members for being there. Antonio was there as well, but he's not here today. Um, uh, and finally, want to go over a few basic rules oh. that I've noticed. Hold on, Mr. Flexer. What did you get out of it? You were there. You know, <laughs> I did what I did what Doug told me what to do, which was to turn it on and then put it on mute. <laughs> uh, but you know, in order to not get fined three hundred dollars. Um, but I have a good sense of what they say after sixteen years. Um, so let me go over a couple of the rules <laughs> that we need to remember. Jimmy is having a very good time with this. <laughs> so uh, starting with absences, can anyone tell me how many absences you're technically allowed in a quarter? One. I know. <laughs> yes, Cynthia. Raise your hands, people. Don't, did you learn that? In <laughs> <laughs> can you hear me? Yeah. Three. We can hear you. It's three. So what happens after the third? Oh, I don't know. I've been too scared to ever try to violate that rule. <laughs> uh, it's actually four. Okay. Oh. It's actually wow. four. So if you think about a quarter, you have 12 meetings. You can miss four out of 12, right? One third. All right. So what happens uh, on the fourth? <clears throat> what is it the fourth uh absence you're dethroned on the fourth absence you are let's see get a warning you get the warning <laughs> you get a warning. we have to make a warning letter which is a pain in the ass but anyway we get a warning we have to make a warning letter and send it to you to make sure you know don't miss another one because then it becomes grounds for resignation there are so many ways to avoid that. So, you know, if you're having any trouble, just let me know. No. Um, well, so I, I think, don't, don't they mean like unexcused absences? Like for example, Laisha went on vacation and if you give notice, that's not counted as like a quote unquote unexcused absence, right, Eric? Um, so, I'll, I'll explain it even there it gets there's another tier okay so um you so you are allowed for excused absences okay so okay. an excused <clears throat> absence does count as one of your absences okay 
So you you know you the, and the reason why is because we need participation. This is a participatory group. It's not about not being here. It's about being here. Uh, so um, you get four absences excused. Let's say you don't <clears throat> let Antonio know before the meeting that you're not going to be there. What happens? So Morning. the meeting comes, we didn't hear from you, you're not there, what happens? What it's happens considered is unexcused. That's, an, that's an unexcused absence, okay? Two unexcused absences in a row, meaning if we don't hear from you for two straight weeks, that's grounds for resignation. If we don't know what's happened to you for two weeks. So you just keep in touch with Antonio, let him know where you're, you know, if you're going to be there or not. Um, but that's an important one. I've noticed pe some people don't realize they need to let Antonio know before they, before the meeting, not after. Okay. That makes sense. Yes, sir. So that's the absences and attendance. Then there's the four tip minimum and, um, that, you know, that those were that the, really the absences part mm -hmm. is the one I wanted to talk to you guys about because, <laughs> of the uh, fact that some people have, you know, they don't, they don't remember to let Antonio know and then they're not there. That's an unexcused absence. Two unexcused absences in a row is grounds for resignation or five excused absences would be, I guess the fifth absence would not be excused, but. You get a hearing, right? Huh? You get a hearing. Yeah. In other words, if, 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 if you are, on that list of like oh you're kind of on the s list right because you miss four times or whatever you get a hearing it's not like you're automatically going to be expelled well you don't get expelled expelled for four anyway right. you right. get expelled for five oh, for but five but no, yes. but you don't you're not necessarily yes, the board ultimately makes the decision and the board is there to decide look is this member someone who's contributing you know, we can look at the number of tips they've given. Are they participating? Are they a good member? Are they in good standing? If so, you know, we can make exceptions, although we try not to because then other people get upset. Um, but that's the gist of it is that you will, um, we will we'll ultimately decide. Um, but we have the backdrop of the, of the rules to, so that we're not just like arbitrarily doing something. Um, so any questions about absences and attendance? Another, here's another point. So let's say you can't be there. Let's say you're going to be gone for six weeks in Hawaii. Oh, what happens? Yeah. Do you have to quit the group? No, you get on the call at seven in the morning. Nobody else <laughs> is going to be up anyway. You just get up, you turn on your phone, you get on the meeting, and you say hello and you hang out for an hour and a half. How hard can that be? You tell the kids to shut up, you're busy. And you get on the phone, you look for some referrals. You talk to the waiter and go, hey, if you're ever in California and you need something built, call T. If you're hungry, go to Doug's Bakery. If you need insurance, you know, that's what you do when you're in Hawaii. You sit on the beach and you show everybody the beach. What? You know, it's 4 o'clock in the morning. It's 4 o'clock in the morning in Hawaii. That's fine. And what's your, de Beautiful what's your definition of vacation, Doug? That's, that's vacation? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> oh, no. I think if this, it's the same as a unicorn. They don't really <laughs> exist. <laughs> they do. Go, they did Hit. before 2020. There you go, hitting the nail on the head, T. <laughs> as always. But a, but a boom. <laughs> <laughs> uh okay good so um where were we when we when we went off on that tangent uh you're well, in you're you're asking, asking a question what if you're in hawaii for six weeks what do you do leave of absence yes you're gonna let antonio know you would like a leave of absence during which time you don't have to tip the purpose of the leave of absence is to allow you to go on vacation without having to tip, okay? It's not so that you can take another business meeting at 7 a.m. 
<laughs> and not be at our business meeting. The reason for the 7 a.m. business meeting with us is so that we are not going to infringe on your daily schedule. So no business meetings during our meeting. Make sense? T, who's always on the road working. <laughs> so what were you saying about me? I just gave you a hard time. <laughs> Never mind. Um, so, um, so again, this is your business meeting every Tuesday morning at 7 a.m. So there's no excused absence for having another business meeting. So let's say you go to Hawaii. You, 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 you have a Hawaii. You tell everybody you're going to Hawaii. And then we're down in Torrance one day. And we go into a coffee shop. And there's Laisha, Not in Hawaii. <laughs> I've been found out. <laughs> She made a Hawaiian bakery in Torrance, is what she made. Let me just tell you, it's a small town and we will fight you. <laughs> so make sure you're actually on vacation. All right. Yeah, so that receipts. So, but remember, <laughs> yeah, I want to see your receipts. <laughs> uh, so remember that, uh, listen, hard time keeping up here. Um, that, uh, Ah, forget it. <clears throat> All right, next. Uh, are there any questions about the uh, the general rules, or does anybody have a rule question? Well, I don't have yeah, a so question. I have a go ahead, suggestion. <laughs> after you, Cynthia. I'll go after the two ladies. Go ahead. Go, Laisha. So, quick question, and I can handle this offline, but I actually do have some. Um, training that is going probably going to interfere on a Tuesday um, in the next month or so. It's for my Series 65, uh, which is required for me by my industry. So with things like that, how do I handle that? I think in the past, I'm just you know yeah. giving you notifications. Excellent question. Excellent question. And let's 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 uh, go through the process. So how many days are you going to be gone? I will be. It's a Monday, Tuesday, so it affects the tip one day. Just one day, not the following week? No, it's okay. a two-day training. It's just a single excused absence, right? You're just going to let Antonio know you're not going to be there that week. That's one of the four absences that you get as a credit if you need to take a class or whatever. Okay? That's good. So you just let Antonio know. Let's say you're going to be in that class two weeks in a row. <clears throat> okay, now that it's two weeks... That's the big difference is one week to two. One week is just an excused absence. Two weeks means that you need to ask for an abs abs uh, leave of absence. I mean, you can, you can also take the two excused absences and just say, I'm going to take two excused absences. But that just means you have only two left, right? If you know you're going to be there the rest of the meeting, the quarter, and it's not a big deal, you don't even need to ask for a leave of absence. But if you're like getting tight and you're going to be gone for two weeks for a legitimate reason, ask for a leave of absence so that you don't get those absences on you, okay? Does that make sense? But it has yep, to be two. Got it, thanks. You don't need it for one, just for two weeks or more. And the two weeks or more can be as long as it needs to be. I mean, if you say you're gonna be gone for three months, right, then what's gonna happen is the board is gonna decide, is it worth it to wait for that long to have that category open where we don't get any referrals from that <laughs> three month, for three months from that category, you know, that's a board decision whether or not they're going to grant that. Does that make can sense? You have a, can you have a surrogate? So very good question, Doug. So you can have, let's say you have an assistant or a partner. If you're not going to be there and you're butting up against your four absences and you're going to be absent again, you can send a representative for you. Okay. So you could send your assistant or your partner as you know, so that you don't get your fifth absence, for example. And if it gets worse and you still can't be there, you can send that assistant or partner up to two times. So on top of your four absences, you can get two more with having a representative show up. The one thing about that is you can't have, they can't be there two times in a row, okay? Because then it starts to be too many times we're seeing that person instead of you. So they can come once and then you can come and then they can come another time. Um, but the point is, you know, it's very difficult to get kicked out based on attendance unless you're not trying and just following the rules. So if you have any questions or you're, 
gonna be it's gonna be a tight quarter. Let me know, and I'll we'll figure out uh, you know a way for you to avoid any trouble. Make sense? I have a question. Those... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. And for his next act, Eric is going to explain the CTC guidelines for uh, mask wearing now. <laughs> I I just want I I'm, I'm not quite certain if um, my attendance when I'm actually having to be uh, on the road if if that's a if that's an interference. Uh, for example, I know that part of the rules is to have your camera on and. If I'm on site, does that get, it, it's not technically an absence, but it, I don't know if it's, you know, looked upon as you're not really attending. You know, when I'm driving. Or so, so the truth is you're not really attending. Okay. I mean, there's no way to be running around and to be fully present. Okay. Right. So you're not, but we are, you know, in a Corona situation and I'm being very lax with all of that okay so people driving in their car is okay we you know I'll, I'll give you another bit of information we're gonna start we've just we've talked and we're gonna start meeting in person January 2022 okay, okay. so six months from now we're mm -hmm. gonna be all clear I'm betting and so mm -hmm. just plan January uh, you know, the second week of January is going to be our first in-person meeting at Vernetti in, on Larchmont. Until then, so when, when that happens, yeah, you can't be in your car riding around because you're going to be in person with right. us. Does that make sense? But yeah, until, then, until then, you know, you can, you can, you know, you can drive if, as long as you can participate and answer questions when we're talking and stuff like that. That's cool. Okay. I just wanted to make sure because this is at least showing my attempt to try and be here but I do understand what you're saying it is very difficult when I'm trying to pay attention to the other cars driving and try and pay attention to the meeting so I do understand that okay good okay good. so is it calendar quarters like January through whatever that would be March, March. Yep. thank you <laughs> yep calendar quarters okay got it thank you yep Absolutely. Any other questions about absences or participation, attendance? Again, our meeting is going to go on, you know, to uh, in person in January. Um, oh, here's another one. Lateness. <clears throat> so if you, if you show up at the meeting past 715, that's an unexcused absence. Okay, even if you're there for the following hour, the missing it even by a minute, uh, Antonio is going to write you down, oh, we're missing you at 715. Okay, so that becomes an absence. It's not the end of the world. <laughs> You'll be fine. But just know that, the, you know, you can't be late because we're all, you know, starting and ending together. Same with leaving. You can't leave before the meeting's over either. You just got a time block, 7 a.m. to 8.30 is you're not gonna be doing anything else. We may end early, great, you bought some time, but you can't be doing anything during that other time frame, and you can't leave early. Make sense? This becomes much more clear and obvious when we're meeting in person, okay? Like if somebody gets up at, seven, at eight, 10 in the morning and leaves, it's pretty obvious somebody just got up and left, right? So in the meetings during on our Zoom, it's not as critical. <clears throat> Make sense? Yes. Any other questions about that? I know this I just was want to make a comment that that all of this sounds like rules and oppression and all that, but really it's setting <laughs> up the frame. No, it's setting up the framework for success. I mean, if you make a commitment to be at the meetings and you're there and you're fully present and you're and you're participating, you will get business and you will make money, and that's the intention of being in the group. So it's really like. You know, rather than it being loosey goosey like my Friday networking meeting where you can have six of the same category and people come and go and all this stuff and nobody's giving anybody any business really, you know, so it really is um, setting up a proper context. So I just wanted to say that. Thank you, Doug. And that's why ultimately, you know, I personally chose LATIP as the framework for us to, to do it because 
you know, all of us have been to networking meetings where we're glad handing and then, you know, getting a bunch of business cards and it turns into nothing, right? Um, this format that we do is much more, like you said, it's intensive. It's not just a networking meeting. It's a full on business resource. And so you, you, you want to look at it that way. And the expectation that, you know, that they were, were basically saying is that every member should try to make every meeting. Like that's what we've committed to and that's our expectation. And so, you know, the, the attendance rules are, they kind of become irrelevant at that point, but we should still know them. Yeah, I mean, in the end, what happens is that people in good standing usually stay in good standing, but let's, you know, sometimes every once in a while you get a rogue member and these rules allow us to exit that member so that it doesn't disrupt the spirit of the group. All right, so um, what I'd like for each one of you to do right now before we get offline, we're just gonna, I want each one of you to tell us one thing that the partner that you spoke with last week is looking for. Can you remember? Yes. Doug, you had Cynthia. BJ, you had Bloomfield. Russ, you had John. Eric had T. Jimmy was solo. Uh, let's start with Doug. What uh, You are Cynthia. So what I'm looking for right now are bite-sized opportunities to help people with, with uh, a limited scope requirement. If they, they have a, a landlord that's threatening them with eviction and I can help them, it's $4.99 an hour down from $6.25 or $6.50. Uh, if someone is a landlord and has a crappy tenant and help them in an hour, I give them more value than the money I take. So I'm looking for bite-sized opportunities to make a difference in people's lives. And Cynthia, I must say, you're looking I'm, beautiful today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm wearing my colors. <laughs> and how um, about you, Doug? Let's hear I'm, from you, Doug. <laughs> no, I, I'm Doug. Yes, I'm Doug. And I'm looking for connections in, like, powerhouse connections in the Jewish community, particularly in the Jewish Educational Committee. I mean, Jewish Educational Committee, like schools. Um, and to set up educational opportunities around Shabbat through Lador Bado. Wow, nicely done. Bravo. You even threw some Hebrew in there. There you go. I think we have a large Jewish contingency in our group. Cynthia, are you Jewish? Um, I'm Jewish by connection to my spouse. I'm not Jewish by birth, but I practice Judaism. So as Doug told me last week, I'm therefore Jewish. Um, I was raised Christian, but we have a hybrid, we have a hybrid family. Um, in other words, we celebrate Christmas and Hanukkah. So do we. <laughs> it's awful. <laughs> no, it's great. It's great. I love it. But, but yeah, we celebrate uh, both. So I consider yeah. myself Jewish. Yes. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, I think we have four or five. Almost half of us are Jewish. All right. So, um, okay, we've got BJ who did JB and JB who does BJ. I'm BJ. And I am going to help. Oh, well, I'm BJ and I'm helping people who have products or services that they need to help market. And I'm going to help them with my awesome photography, my videography. Uh, my uh, contributions to their website, their marketing materials, their pamphlets. Oh, beautiful. All and right. I am JB and <laughs> Jim Bloomfield, an acupuncturist, and I'm looking for um, a Pilates instructor, a really great one, to be able to kind of merge together and work together because they both kind of go hand in hand and BJ actually has a connection that she'd like to make. So she's going to do that today for the Pilates instructor. Beautiful. And uh, speaking of, you know, making introductions, that app that Jimmy showed us, that makes it a lot easier to tip. Like you just go click, 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 and you, your tip is done, as opposed to going on the website and all the crap you have to fill out um, for giving a tip. So I think the app is good just for that reason alone. 
next, let's do um, Russ and John. All right, I'm John Schoenborn. I have 33 years in the title insurance business. I'm looking for realtors, realtors who appreciate a technician rather than a salesman. Beautiful. <laughs> Thank you very much. That was very sharp. All right. How about you, John Chad? I mean, Russ Talley. Okay. I'm Russ Talley. If you love someone or you owe someone, you should come talk to me. Don't, uh, don't let your heirs be saddled with debt when you pass away. I can help you with life insurance. Beautiful. Thank you, Russ. And next, Eric Flexner by T. Cassie. Let me turn my video on. Eric, or I am looking for anyone who uses the word move, specifically sellers. That's my bread and butter, people. How's that, Eric? Beautiful. I love it. You nailed it. Get it? <laughs> okay. Uh, and my name is T. And I, you know, I do all kinds of stuff. I do kitchens, baths, you know, whatever you need. I can do small projects. But what I want from you people is I want a whole house, new construction or remodel of an old house, full, uh, you know, flip type of scenario. I want the whole house all the way from the front door to the back door, from the roof to the basement. Um, you know, that would be the most delicious work and fun work for me. So if you could keep your eyes out for that specifically, that would be great. Otherwise, I'll do another kitchen. Anything you got, appreciate it. Thank you, T. Okay, T? <laughs> yes, thank you, T. <laughs> thank you, Eric, that was great. Okay. All right, folks, anything uh, else for the good of the order? It's 8.15, any announcements or testimonials? Uh, yeah, I'd like, uh... I'd like, oh, I'm going to see T. I'm excited about that. And I'd like to talk to BJ about some marketing materials, photography and videography. Yes, you I'm going to actually working. be at the bakery. I'm going to come by. Okay, cool. Uh, Are you coming by today too, BJ? Yeah, but I don't think oh. you're going to make it. Are you, you going before or after? Going here. Um, anybody else? Announcements or testimonials? Yeah, I would like to thank uh, Cynthia, Antonio, Leisha, Jimmy and Liberty for reaching out with some tips. Appreciate it. Wow. Good job, guys. Fantastic. That's a lot of people. Anybody else? Anybody? I do. Have an announcement. I, I, I've kept it rather quiet, but um, this Saturday I'm hosting a, uh, a virtual mixer for women owned businesses. And I've invited the ladies in this group, but Really, the hope is that we can generate tips, the, uh, at least those of us that are in this group, we can generate tips for even our male members. So sorry to exclude you guys, but I'm you know, all about girl power this weekend. And I'm really uh, excited for all of the women who have accepted the invitation to come to the mixer. My business partner's gay. Can he go? <laughs> uh, it, does, does he identify as a woman? <laughs> I sure hope not, because he's the one ugly woman. That's for okay. sure. No, he doesn't. <laughs> so I know I've, I've got the wrong chromosome, but can you forward information to me on that so I can pass along to other? Oh, sure. I'll send people? you guys the flyer. I'll send you the flyer. Okay. And it's open to all women, uh, women-owned businesses. So I know uh, for <laughs> sure um, that there are some. I, I believe that there are tips to be generated for everyone in this group from that meeting. So I just want to, uh, you know, sorry, I just got to leave you guys out this week. <laughs> We're used to it. All right. Number one, Doug is going to be at Diamond Doug Bakery. I'm sorry, at Diamond Bakery at uh, around nine o'clock ish. So if you can be well, there, that'd be great. Well, we're meeting, a meeting with T around 9.15. So we need some time to do our thing and then we'll be, then I'll be available to mingle. Okay. Yeah. If Doug anyone wants to drop Doug by, secondly, have we have T who's going, sorry. I'm sorry. I was going to say Doug and I need to have our own special time. 
Yeah. <laughs> Secondly, we have T uh, this weekend on her event. Please try to be a participate in that. And then when Antonio is back next week, he's going to tell us about his event, which he's also having on a Saturday in a few weeks, I think. Any other events that you guys are throwing that you want us to participate in? That's it. My daughter's birthday is the 25th, so any cash <laughs> contributions for her future are welcome. All right, beautiful. <laughs> no, but I want to say thanks again to Jimmy for hooking me up with, um, with uh, Gumi because I had a great class last weekend, so. Yay. Yay! Glad I could help. Thank you. All right. Well, I think that is all we've got for today. 818. We are Wait, one more thing. I forgot. I want to thank Jimmy Green for continuing to help my niece. Um, thank you, Jimmy. We're Helping working her on become it. a homeowner. Yeah, thank yeah, you so, getting so closer. much. All right. I, want to thank, I would also like to thank Jimmy, who is currently um, doing the hardest refi he's ever done in his entire life. <laughs> which is my refi because my finances are messed up. But not only that, he's also getting to answer 6 million questions from me uh, that are, you know, half of them, at least half of them are highly annoying and irritating and partly, <laughs> and maybe even a little bit insulting and offensive. <laughs> so you guys, I, I was teasing Eric about, showing up to that meeting Friday because he spent most of the time texting and calling me about his refinance. So, so just so you know, great practice. If I can handle Eric's refinance, I can do anyone. So it's, it's good. I'm learning here. I'm, you know, it's, it's, it, it's strengthening my, I'm flexing my muscles. Here. You are definitely having to flex. I'm making you flex. <laughs> All right. Okay, everybody, enough of that. Have a wonderful week. Kick some ass, make some money. We'll see you next week. And uh, uh, BJ, I mean, T, did you say it's this weekend you're doing your event? Yes, it's on Saturday from okay. 4 to 5.30 p.m. You're going to send that to everybody? I will. Yes, I will send it to everyone. I'll send it right after I get off this call. All right. Anybody who we see at Doug's today, we'll see you then. Otherwise, have a great week. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Aloha. <laughs>